Hey guys, this week's podcast brought to you in part by HighSpots.com. If you need anything in the world of wrestling, HighSpots has it. They also present a live eye pay-per-view, $5 wrestling, this Friday, July 27th. You can get it at WWNLive.com. It's only $5. Myself and Marty will be there live doing commentary. Eugene versus the Freight Train. Watch it. But for now, enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler, Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax, put in those tweaked audio earbuds because you're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast, a life podcast, a personal journal, an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am a podcaster. I'm a presenter. I'm a personality. I'm uh, the post office's best friend. There's a lot of P's in there. But most importantly, I am a professional wrestler, and we are sitting here live in the studio. Apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, before we go any further, this is a fan-supported and listener-supported podcast supported by people just like you we give it to you free of charge every single Thursday on WeLoveColt.com and on iTunes. A couple great ways you can support. You can do some stuff for free. Leave a review on iTunes, maybe five stars. How about tell a friend? Let them know what's going on, maybe via social media. Uh, don't do it during tout. Not, you don't got to tout it. Don't even worry about that. Yeah, Twitter's fine for now. Maybe a little Facebook. But if you do have a couple dollars, actually, and you want to give back, you can coltmerch.com that's where i have my t-shirts buttons pictures posters dvds and so much more every purchase over there helps keep this thing going i do have a couple new items over at cold merch i have headbands a lot of people have been asking for headbands finally some cabanorama headbands are in the merch bucket you can go over there and i also have a new uh print poster of the great art done by Rob Schamberger. He's that guy who started the Kickstarter to draw all the NWA champions. Well, he drew Colt Cabana, and we've put the art up on Colt Merch. It's just a print of it. You can see his art and his design at robshamberger.com or follow him at Twitter, at Rob Schamberger. But you can check out that print poster, the headbands, the Wrestling Road Diaries. All of that is available at coltmerch.com. All right, the guest this week, Kofi Koferland, Koferland Kingston sits down with us. He's from the WWE. Have you ever heard of it? It's a big corporation. They do professional wrestling. Slash, I'm sorry, they do sports entertainment. Kofi sits down. This is one that we've been wanting to do for a while. Just uh, our schedules haven't met up. And so finally we met up together. And we were able to converse, have a fun little conversation, podcast a little bit, get into it. Uh, he's from Jamaica. Oh, wait. Ghana. Come on, pretty mama. No, I don't know. We'll get into that. He does have a great story, a fun story, something that we can all relate to. And we'll get into that in the middle of the podcast, the meat of it. So you got to sit through that whole thing. But it's not hard. Kofi's such a fun success story. And uh, he's, he's, he's doing it, man. He's doing it. He's with the big guys. He's making the big bucks. He's contracted. He's touting. He's touting to the world, you know, I guess when you're with a corporation or with a company and they invest, you know, millions into a social media experiment, you got to do what they do. You got to do what they say. And they say, hey, you guys got to tout. Well, then Kofi's going to tout. But on the flip side, working with a corporation like WWE, a large corporation, there's so many advantages. They will make music for you. Some of them will make your own custom music and i know you're thinking when you're a giant superstar it's so cool you get your own action figure you get your own t-shirt but they will make your sound your custom sound so it's perfect it fits your character exactly and that's something i don't think we've talked a lot about on the podcast here is how important entrance music is sergeant slaughter bad street with michael ps hayes it defines who you are as a pro wrestler and when that music hits People know and identify exactly with you, who you are. They know to look at that curtain, and they know you're going to come out, and you're going to put on the show just based off of those first two or three chords that hit right when your music starts. I remember as a joke, I once put Copa Cabana on track two of my CD, knowing that that wasn't going to be my entrance music, but maybe one day if I was a heel, I would use that. By accident, the guy played Copa Cabana, and I came out to Copa Cabana as a babyface, and I came to the ring, and unfortunately, that was a great match. Uh, at least at that time. And so that was a match that I sent out to promoters. Later to hear, Ian Rotten told me the only reason he booked me 
was because he loved Barry Manilow and Copacabana. So how important is music there? And I, I remember going down to Eden Rotten's IWA and giving him a tape. I have been at this for so long that I have used a Maxwell tape to come out to entrance music. That's what they were. Nowadays, MP3 files, before that, CDs, tape. A tape. Of course, nowadays, I'm so lucky to have a good friend in Kid Russell and him and Matt Jenkins put my music together. Boom, boom, Cole Cabana, the one that you hear. It's not easy for an independent wrestler to have their own theme music that really fits them. And of course, I've known Kid for, I don't know, since I was in third grade. So obviously, he knows me so well and he knows exactly how to put myself into a theme song. And it was hard when I was in the WWE. And that was, I tweeted the other day, it was a true story. I said, hey, can I come out to Jive Soul Bro? Because I thought that would be the most amazing thing ever. You know, 15, 20 years later, another guy coming out to uh, Slick singing Jive Soul Bro. That was shot down, though. But l lucky enough for you and lucky enough for me, at that time in my career, I was taping a lot of things, you know, kind of like Sean Stasiak style. I had a hidden camera. I had a hidden audio device. This was, the, I guess, the early days of podcasting. And I had taped my meeting that I had with the WWE. Yes, I know it's illegal. I shouldn't put it out there. But hey, it's my podcast now. I don't work for them. So uh, I've recently found these audio clips. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you hear the meeting for yourself. Take it in, would you? Wow. Jim, right? Yeah. Jim Johnston? Wow, this is amazing. You've composed so many legendary wrestling songs over the years. I mean, Steve Austin's Glass Shattering, Bret Hart's Guitar Screech, Vader, When He Walks. Yeah, yeah, I know. I also scored the My Little Pony cartoon, but nobody talks about that, do they? No. No, 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 that's impressive. What do you want? Oh, uh, they sent me in here to get my music done. Jesus, another one. Fine, what's your name? Well, my name's Colt, but one of the writers said they're going to call me Scotty Goldman. Goldman, huh? Easy. Hobbit Nagila. Now get out. Um, excuse me, Mr. Johnston? What? Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila, Hava. See? Goldman. Jews. Rabbis. It all works itself out. Now get out of here. But, but, but that's Barry Horowitz's song. And look how great he did. Fine. You're being a real Goldman here. Always something to complain about. Is, is that a term? It is now. Okay. Give me an hour and I'll cook up the greatest entrance music you've ever heard in your life. Well, I did it. I studied your whole career. Years of traveling the world to Japan, England, Mexico... Mixing comedy and wrestling. I had a three-hour talk with your parents dissecting the very idea of how each instrument and note would perfectly complement your walk to the ring. If ever there was music that spoke to the world and said, Scotty Goldman, this is it. Colt, sit back and be prepared to have your mind blown. It's we can talk about this stuff on yeah, here if you yeah. want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your wife did up this room. Yeah, this is uh yeah, she did this room. She had a she had a vision all of a sudden, you know. Um she she wanted to pass you can see the walls are uh, I believe this is a custard custard yellow. When you go into yeah. into any of this process, are you even a vault? are you a total no. man's man when it comes oh, to this? Oh no, no. I have I have nothing to do with anything. Um I just uh you know, I have to she asked me my opinion. Right. And uh basically agrees with the uh, with the opposite. You know, so yeah. Oh, so your opinion isn't I, yes, honey, whatever you want. You oh, give an no, actual well, opinion. I give an actual opinion. Okay. You know what I mean? And then she takes it upon herself to uh, to, <laughs> to, to go wrong. to go with the exact opposite. Right. No, no, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna do the exact opposite of what you say. So that's the psychology of women. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> and like you probably had to do that stuff with with the wedding too, right? Yeah, wedding. I mean, um, this is stuff I know nothing about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's complicated stuff. <laughs> it really is. It really is. All right. Well, Kofi. Yes, sir. Kofi Kingston on the podcast. The podcast. Were you one of these guys that Punks talks about uh, shamelessly ribbing my my voice? And I that, that's the first <laughs> thing I always do because you know I'm a, I'm a big fan of your uh, your your show and your interviews. Gets us through several hours of all the you know traveling and everything we have to do. Um, 
But yes, yes. Yeah, you're whole, right there. I, I'm right there. You know, the, the podcast and, and the song of the day. What, what's going to be the song of the other day? For you this, you can way? choose. You want to really? Be, I mean, oh, I'm going to have to think about yeah, this. The, you can't the, just put me on the spot here. I didn't know I would have any involvement in, in picking the song. I allow know? people to. Like, oh, wow. I, uh, Hawkins wanted to uh, tell me a lie by Shawn Michaels. He's oh, very yeah. excited to have that one. <laughs> um, yeah, if there's just something special that you want, please feel free. I will have to think about okay. it. I'll have to. I don't, you know, this is a big thing. Right. You know, I sure. can't just. I can't just do that. Uh, Kofi, so right away I want to get into, um, and so you, so you know the shtick. You hear me talk. You know that I talk about the honky tonk man gimmick. Yeah. The love of uh, just you could ride it out for years. And I, and I think, my personal opinion, mm-hmm. is like you and Santino, you guys are set. I mean, you, you're set, like you're <laughs> set. You could do this, and I've been to these live shows. As lo- how long you been on part of the TV now? Man, it's been about. Uh, I debuted in January 2008, so whatever the math is, my my right, number term was over almost four, four years. years. Yeah, really weird because I, I still feel like a rookie a lot of the time. Really? You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, I look around the locker room and you see like a lot of younger guys. Like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about wow. that. You know, but um. Yeah, it's like oh, think about I, people I've, like I've been around ribbing you, or oh, that you that you're no, yeah, that I'm like one that of JBL's the people that sneak out of somewhere. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting kiss bumps. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Holly's gonna beat the shit out of me somehow. Yeah, man, it's yeah. The locker room's changed so much since when I was first there. You know, I'm I'm sure people have heard about it, but um, it was scary, and they never like messed with me or anything like that. I, I'm lucky; I never really been messed with or anything like that, but. uh you know, you'd always hear stories about, yeah, stories. oh, Bob Holly's going to kick your ass. Oh, JBL, you know, he's going to terrorize you and this and that. And they never did to me, but, you know, definitely the, the fear was there. And I hear, I hear that a lot now, that, that how great the locker room is. And yeah. So, you know, who, who told me that is what, like when they all started doing NXT and it was like they all went up at the same time. And those were the guys that were in my kind of class of developmental. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, how, is it awful? And they're like, actually, like. Everyone's really nice. We just kind of hang out. There's no pressure. There's no fear. And I think yeah. for me, like in my mindset of what what it's like up there, that's kind of when it all switched. Just hearing about it. Of course, I'm second nature. You're yeah. in the belly of the beast. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's definitely. Uh, again, like I said before, it is completely different than when I first came. And it, you know, seems like just yesterday. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of people are more willing to 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 help people out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at least that's always been my mentality because I've always been so. Um, I guess taken care of, you know, people have always been willing to help me out. So I'm always willing to help other people out. And that's kind of more the, the vibe that, uh, that's kind of up there right now. Well, and a guy who's set in your place, in my mind, it's like, you're, uh, you're like almost an untouchable, like your shtick is down. The people come, they always mm-hmm. love you. So when you have that kind of like, not job security, but like, you're not worried, you probably are in a position where you can go help people and you yeah. want to make and, it a good place and, to work. And I, I've never been a person to really be, uh, I guess, job scared or whatever you know so I I don't as far as I'm concerned and not to be like arrogant or anything like that but I've always been one to try to do things differently to the point where it's like okay people there's not really many people out there that can do what I do Uh the way that I do it you know what I mean it's not like a a cocky uh, cocky or arrogant statement or anything like that but um it's like that you have to like you have to say it. it well, it yeah, sounds it sounds awful, it's, but like it's, it's the reality. I, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth, you know. Um, and it's a, it's a something where, um, yeah, like I, like I said, I just don't think uh, there are many people who can who can do what I do because I don't try to like, you know, I guess be like anybody else or, or whatever. And uh, I don't think it's a really a good idea for someone to look at somebody's whole like you know move set or the way someone does things and really try to be like them. I, I've always tried to like certain things from you know I'll watch the way Shawn Michaels does something or I'll watch the way Rey Mysterio does something or the way they tell stories and then I'll try to I guess kind of tell a story in that same way but at the same time because I'm doing it it's a completely different story you know what I mean mm-hmm. so um yeah I've, I've never really been uh you know I guess I guess afraid of of somebody pushing me out at least not yet you know? <laughs> yeah, give it 10 years. so yeah <laughs> um, but that's that's uh, you know what because I do remember your debut match which was like Okay, right. But and if you go watch that, it's a gem. And, and please don't watch that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you say because I would always have in my back of my head, like, what would I do in my debut match? And I have my four or five or six things that I know nobody else does, and that would get me over and whatever. And um, but my so my debut match was, you know, you had a guy who, to enhance you. I was the enhancer, mm-hmm. uh, so I couldn't really use. As I tried to use as many as I could. I think I gave Kendrick the butt butt and, you know, did a couple other things. But, like, you – it looked like you had a whole bag of tricks to say, hey, I'm Kofi. I'm different. Mm-hmm. This is what I have. Yeah. Although I guess it is kind of 
different with a guy who's you haven't been working with in developmental every day to get ready for that match. Yeah, yeah, man. That match, gosh, I, I'll never forget it because uh, you look at it and there were like four or five things that didn't really go smoothly you know like I think uh <laughs> the one that stands out in my mind is like I went to go give the dude uh you know David Owen uh, uh a monkey a flip monkey in the flip. corner that, yeah, yeah you know and uh I remember him being uh kind of real you know anxious or whatever to, to take that monkey flip. Oh, I'll take a real good monkey flip I'll take a real good monkey flip I'm like all right so this is cool and I sure enough I go to do it and I think you know you get out there and you're in front of like thousands and thousands of people it's it's different than being like on the independent scene you know and I was that was the first time like I had been in front of a lot of people too um I mean I'd been done doing like dark matches and things like that but uh this was you know on tv this was it and I remember I went to go give him that monkey flip and somehow, some way, like his head came out of my hands because I think he wanted to take that big European style mm. bump. You know what I mean? And, and look he literally. For, look, for, look for last minute. Yeah, right. right. So he literally like goes straight up and lawn darts <laughs> down. And you see me like get up. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, no, I got to play it off. And I just throw up my fist like, yeah, <laughs> you know, do. this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Great monkey flip. Yeah. But, yeah, there were, like, several things in that match that didn't quite go according to plan. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm still here. Yeah. So, but, you you did, know. <laughs> but you did have, like, right, you had, like, four or five different things that was, was that your mindset? Like, listen, I've got to be different. These are my different things. This is why people will come to me or... Or yeah. was it just like, fuck, I got to get over really quickly or... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, again, like, I don't, uh, I, I don't quite just do, like, moves to be, uh, to be different. You know, I just do them because like, oh, okay. Well, I guess, I don't know. It's kind of like I'm not trying to be different, but I'm trying to like stand out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I'll do something that like looks cool to me. Like, I get a lot of my inspiration from like Japanimation or like Kung Fu movies and stuff like that. Like Jackie Chan, I'll see him do something in a movie. I'm like, oh, how can I incorporate that in a way that makes sense, you know, in, in what I do? Um, do you remember seeing so something specifically where you're like... In Jackie and any, anything. Oh, yeah, well, specific. Going back to Jackie Chan, actually, uh, I think it was first strike. He has like a ladder uh, fight scene. He fights like thirty-five guys, and he has like a ladder, and he's doing all types of different moves and whatnot. And at one point, he like takes the ladder and like puts it down, and does like a drop kick through it. You know. Okay. So I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, okay. I can I can probably do that in Money in the Bank if we get a chance to do it." So that's a that's a thing that I've been doing uh, a couple of times. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't like. Uh, I don't know. I don't really try to like really go really out of my way to do something that's different it's like oh that's different maybe i can do it you know what i mean i don't know i don't know if that makes sense mm. but um yeah i don't know I, I think by default like i again going back to the debut match or whatever like i i knew i did a few different things that were kind of unique and whatnot but at the same time it wasn't like uh oh no one's doing this so i'm i'm gonna do that you know what i mean okay it's uh See, I think I would do that. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be like, well, yeah, yeah well, well, this could make me different. Yeah, just in saying, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess. Maybe, got, maybe, I mean, doing, maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. You're doing all right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's so many topics to touch on. I think. Yeah, sure, man. Um, shoot. Yeah, shoot, brother. Here we are <laughs> in the studio. Apartment. No man, this ain't nope. no studio apartment. All right, man. all right. The satellite <laughs> studio. My, yeah, my fa my fake wife didn't come and, and paint my house, man. It's, <laughs> it was like it, how I got it. Yeah. Uh, you, so you're living like the you did the story of like you, the actual story, and from the, what my friends tell me, mm -hmm. is that you were sitting at your uh, job. And you're like, this sucks. Yeah, That's, yeah. So you're like an actual real person. Like everyone right. knows, like you're a real person. You're not just like Kofi Kingston, the dude who comes out to the fun music and, yeah. <laughs> and booms around. You were a you were a dude. You were a civilian, right? Yeah, man. And it's a really uh, kind of a crazy story because you know, growing up, we're always told, "Oh, growing up can... in Jamaica." Oh, wait a minute. Where? What? Wait now, Jamaica. Now, uh, no. Why, why would you? Why would you say that? Wait, no. Jamaica. Bo I mean, I everyone know always Boston. says, "Oh, you know, you come out to reggae music. You you had an accent." If you go back and look at the tapes, you'll actually see that I never had an accent. At all? Oh, oh! So that's how no. That, 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 of, of course, that's not true. That's not true at all. That's a, that's a real funny story too. How that whole uh, the Jamaican character came into play. But um, I guess going back to uh, you know being being a uh, a civilian per right. se, like you know as kids or whatever, we're always told you can be whatever you want to be. And for whatever reason, I think when we get to adulthood, like um, so many people are just not satisfied with their lives. You know, working like a nine to five, being in an office, and that's kind of like what I 
did. You know, like I graduated from high school and college and it's like, okay, you're supposed to get an internship. You're supposed to work in a corporate setting for 30 years, 40 years or whatever, going to retirement and, and whatnot. So there's like a very linear path that you're supposed well, to go let's talk through about this because my so, i'm the same with my parents and my parents pressured me into yeah, that the same way like same thing my my parents and just the the people who i was around because you you know you start trying to tell people that you want to be a, a wwe superstar they look at you like oh no that's not what you're supposed to do you're supposed to climb the corporate ladder and work towards retirement and then retire you know what i mean well, what, did, and, what did your parents do my parents, at first, when I told them, uh, no, what did they do for oh, a living? For, for a living, yeah. they're actually both uh, librarians. Um, and no, they did not meet in a library. A lot of people <laughs> ask the the question. I was going to ask if they met on the game show. Were you on that game show? No, Silent Library. Okay, no, no that was that was not me. Thank goodness, man. They did some nasty stuff in there. I, I man, yeah. If I ever had to do like a Fear Factor or something like that, I think I'd be okay till I had to like eat the nasty. The eating is the same like, way for me. Yeah, insects and all that stuff. But um, but so they met they, the library. So but yeah, so, they we I mean yeah we actually came. Uh, we, I was born in Ghana in West Africa, and I came to the United States when I was about like two years old. You know, stereotypical. Like you talk about the American dream, and that's kind of like what my life has been. My parents came here for a better opportunity for their kids. You know what I mean? And I, I'm sure that they wanted me to kind of, you know. Um, I, I guess uh, following their footsteps as far as like, but they actually are uh, teachers too. Uh, my dad teaches at Boston College, and um, you know, uh, my mom was a teacher too. Well, my, so, my mom's a teacher, and yeah. she was always the. I think my dad was always like, "Well, I don't really." Whatever you want to do, go be happy. But my mom was always like, the idea of thirty years, get your pension, right. security, security, security. And I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's the big decisions in teachers' lives, or and obviously. Same same model, you know, you, Colt, you have to go to college, you have to get an internship, same thing. Yeah, same thing. yeah, and, and it was even to the point where, like, you know, when I told my parents that uh, I'd been working in, in that corporate world or whatever. And what was I, the job? Let's hear it. I actually, uh, well, I worked for the, uh, the Staples Corporation, uh, you know, Staples Office Supplies and whatnot, and their headquarters is in uh, Framingham, Massachusetts. So I majored in, like, advertising and public relations, marketing or whatever uh, in, in college, and uh, this was supposed to be, like, an advertising job, you know? So I got the job out of, out of college, and basically it was, uh, like, if you, you know those big, like, buyer's guides that go out, the basically, like, 800 pages worth of, like, you know, Section one is paper clips. Section two, oh, chairs, you know, panels. Uh, I was responsible for basically a, a few different sections in the catalog, and I would have to, like, proofread, like, the make sure all the periods were lined up, all the words were spelled okay. I, it was, uh, the title was production coordinator, and it's like, no matter, like, how excited you seem about it, like, it, it's still paper clips and push pins and yeah. you know what I mean and and ergonomic chairs oh my gosh like uh, oh how much did you it's, relate with the office did you watch that yeah oh yeah, yeah exactly right. that's that's pretty much exactly what it was that's exactly what it was uh that in office space too okay, you know yeah. with, with your boss uh it was just like you know what I can't believe this is the rest of my life like I literally sat in my cubicle the first day of work and uh like I had my iMac computer and everything and I'm looking at the bare walls again getting goosebumps <laughs> thinking about it because it's it's very uh, bizarre to think that that was going to be the rest of my life you know um, and uh, just one day I was like you know what I, I think I'm going to try to follow my dreams and actually I tried to uh, look into training uh, Killer Kowalski School uh, is up in Boston it's uh, been since called Chaotic uh, well when I trained there it was called the Chaotic Training Center but when I first looked into it in college, it was like $2,000 for like a lifetime membership. And that was like, first, I had no way to get there from, you know, from Newton, Massachusetts to drive all the way there with like classes and everything. Um, and then also like it wasn't. Um, you were saying while you were in college, you were looking. Yeah, right? yeah. And then $2,000 was like a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To like to, to put to put down. I didn't have that kind of money in college. I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just keep going on this path that everyone's telling me to go on. And then one day I'll just you know? eventually get to WWE so, somehow. Yeah. All right. So it wasn't until I actually got to like that corporate setting where I was like, this is not going to work. You yeah. know, um, I, I have to try. So I was actually working like, you know, eight hour, nine hour days or whatever. And then I drive like an hour and a half to uh, the school. So how long, and, how long before you say, how many, how long at the job before you say, Oh, uh, it was about a year. So and I actually got like a, so 
um, I got a big like tax return back. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to put it towards this WWE career. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. But was it WWE career or was it just wrestling career? Well, I, my goal was to get to WWE, okay. and by doing that, you know, you the stereotypical path is like, I mean, you someone like asks you if uh, like how do you get to WWE? It's like, okay, well, you must have like a minor league training system or a tryout. You get to the minor leagues and then they get you from there, and it's so different for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't really met anybody that's had that exact story you know everyone's always like come from different backgrounds oh i dropped out of college to pursue my dream i, I did this uh mine hit my, my story is kind of like the story that you th- you would you know you would think um would uh w- would happen for for somebody you know what i mean as far as uh okay you're training on the indies you get signed you go to developmental you get called up from developmental you grind it out on the main roster and then you kind of work your way up so that's you know that's kind of how it happened for me um, we had that trial at my school and um, I remember, um, you know, no one had ever seen like a, a Jamaican character. I was doing this on the Indies too. Were you doing this you from know? day one? Oh, from day one, yeah. yeah. And it was, it's funny too because that kind of came about because um, you know my my real name's actually Kofi or whatever. And uh, the deal was uh, while we were there, they're like, "Oh, WWE's real big into characters right now. You got to play a character. You got to find a character. You know, you got to come up with a name." You could either a be a garbage man yeah. or a, a hockey player. <laughs> so, you know, or... something's like, "Yeah, they're getting back into characters." Okay, you got to find a character to play or a plumber. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you got. I remember uh, yeah, Todd Sinclair, Fat Pants. Uh, he used to uh, run our like our, our Wednesday practices, which kind of like just a you know open mats type thing. You know, where we'd go in and. And um, do you know work on whatever random things you needed to work on, and um, he was like, "Look, man, you got you got to come up with a name, otherwise they're going to give you a, a like kind of a joke name, which kind of happened to uh, you know he goes by uh, Tommaso Ciampa right mm-hmm. now." They gave him, uh, his name is Tommy Penmanship. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. He used to, oh, chaotic. That's what they, yeah, gotcha. that, that, was the game, that was the name that they gave I like him. That so he came out, he, he came out, pen. he had like the big quill, yeah. and whatnot, but it was a you know cool character, but it kind of started off as a joke. And uh, he was able to kind of get it over. But, you know, uh, that wasn't always the case with everybody. So they're like, oh, you got to come up with something. And the Damian Marley CD uh, had just come out, Welcome to Jam Rock. And I was listening to that on the way, you know what I'm saying, from, uh, from work to, uh, to, to practice. And we uh, had like a promo day one day. And they gave me like some situation. And I just started going off in a Jamaican accent, you know. And I forget what the promo was about. But, um, you know, I just came out, uh, you know, what, what's going on, you know, Jamaica. And then everyone loved it. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, you have to do that. That's that's what it's going to be. Because no one had ever seen anything like that. And, um, you know, when I had that tryout again, uh, there was a whole bunch of different agents and stuff there, talent scouts and whatnot. Yeah, yeah Nova says that he, yeah. right? Nova no, came. Yep, and- yep. Nova came. And again, that's like another thing like you would expect to happen. Like if you were going to pursue a WWE career, you would think that you'd have like a trial where you'd have like a whole bunch of different agents. Nowadays, you go to TV and uh, it's very hard to get a, a, a full out tryout match where everybody's watching. There's just so much stuff going on, you know, for them to, uh, you know, like actually be sitting down and watching you and, you know, criticizing you and giving you feedback. That was actually what I experienced as far as uh you know what I mean? The, the tryout is concerned. So it was like Nova was there. Uh, Tim Horner was an agent at the time. Steamboat. Why, they, why did they go? They went because that was an official tryout was an at official, your school? It was an official tryout at the school for which we actually had to put posters up all over, you know, town or whatever. And the thing was, is like. What, the tryout for WWE? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you, and and gyms, it was like, you have, yeah, you have to go to gyms, like pizza stores oh, wow. and whatnot and put up these posters and whatnot. And, and the thing was, is like, oh, they're looking for guys who are 6'6", 220. And none of us at the school were 6'6", right. 220. Now we have to go out and put up posters. Yeah. And it's like, man, this is the job that like we are training for like five days a week. Yeah. You know, and they're not even looking for us. You know, so we were kind of like a little bit bitter uh, having not... having oh, to wow. do that. Yeah, you that's know? a Mitch Hedberg joke is uh, I can go to two, uh, 2,000... 2,000 pizza places or two dumpsters. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Just throw those fuckers out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, that's kind of, that was what the deal was. Yeah, my, and- my, in our school, like, the one of the reasons I went, because on the, at the, on the Steel Domain, at the website, it was like, Iron Sheik once showed up. And I was like, ooh, you never know who can yeah. show up. Like, Iron Sheik <laughs> one time came there, I think, to buy marijuana from, oh, like, God. one of the trainers. Jeez. And, like, you actually have real scouts coming in yeah man so it was like a, this huge deal like like i said oh god there was like at least six different agents there specifically there to watch our matches and i got called up 
I got called there for uh for called up for like one match or whatever. You know, and I was actually uh, to to the ring. In front of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just had us all sit there. Okay, you and you uh, get up. Are you a baby face heel, whatever? Um, And at the time, I was playing a heel, and I had no business playing a heel. I had been in the business for like six months. You know what I mean? And uh, just like I I, I just didn't know what I was doing, you know? And um, first match I had, you know, I was was the heel or whatever. And then you're like, okay, all right, we'll have, have a seat. Called up another couple of people. Uh, hey, uh, Kofi, can you come back up here? Can you play babyface? Yeah, sure. Even easier. Just sit, sit there and listen. You know what right. I mean? And I, again, I was like really lucky too and chaotic. Like, uh, I, in my opinion, I had like the best guys in New England. You know what I mean? Just uh, to, to be training under. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of just different ring generals. You know, uh, Max Bauer, uh, Handsome Johnny, Brian Malone, his penmanship. Um, a lot of people who knew what they were doing and were able to make me look good, you know. So I had another match as a baby face, went very well. Sat down, they called up another few people. Oh, Kofi, uh, you, you, can you come up here and have another match? I was the only one they called up more than once. They called me up three times, had three different matches mm. or whatever. So it was cool because it's like, okay, these guys are interested, you know. And I had another good match. I actually had a match with, uh, with Bone Crusher, Fred Sampson, yes. Darren Young. You know, and, um, and it's funny uh, how we all, you know, we all and, meet up somewhere. Yeah, you know, and, and a few, few, a uh, few weeks ago, we just had like a tag match or whatever, where you know we we faced off against each other. And you talk about like full circle, and um, it, it's cool to see guys from the independents actually come up and and make it. You know, mm-hmm. but um, so yeah, Nova uh, after the uh, after the whole trial, he's like, yeah, you know, we're probably gonna give you a call, and um, you know, next next few days or whatever, and this and that. So I'm just like. I'm not one to really get like excited until something happens. I don't ever like I'm I'm real superstitious, and uh, like we always say, uh, don't count them, and that's talking about like your chickens before they hatch. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as you do that, things like end up going the other way. So uh, especially in wrestling, huh? Exactly yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So you know, sure enough, though, I remember being at Staples again, and I'm sitting there like in line, and uh, I'm going to pay for my food, and I see like a 203 number come up on my cell phone. I'm just like sitting there. Like, oh, leave my food right there or whatever. Go back and sit down. Uh, hello? This is, hey, uh, hey, Kofi, this is, uh, this is Nova. You know, I got some uh, some good news. We're, we're going to sign you. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. See it, Staples. And, yeah. <laughs> Fuck all you guys. <laughs> and that, that's actually, that's kind of how it was, too. Like, I literally sat down and he's like, okay, but, we know, we're having a real big problem with, like, information kind of slipping out on the internet. So don't don't tell anybody, you know? So now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I can't tell anybody. And I took Including that. your boss? Even, yeah, that's what I, like the first couple of days, like I didn't say anything. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well I got to give him my two weeks. Right. So let me tell my boss or whatever. And uh, I, I let him know. And then, um, you know, I'd be going to practice still. And, uh, you know, we'd have like storylines or whatever that we were working on. And, I couldn't tell anybody. And those are the biggest these talkers, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you know? right. Sure. And, I, and I'm sure like every, I, I'm sure that it would have been fine with the, the guys that I would have told. But again, it's like you mentioned one thing and all of a sudden something it's like out something sure. gets out, Man, you know. Facebook wasn't even around then, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Think about it if, if it was a Facebook so, or a Twitter post of some sort. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it was pretty crazy. And, and again, just even like being at work and, uh going to these meetings where we're talking about, oh, well, we're going to have a big sale on these push pins and paper clips and, uh, well, I don't, the margin rate's not going to be enough. We're only going to take off 13%, not 12%. You know, and I'm sitting there in this meeting and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so glad. Yeah. Like, I'm out of here, man. Like, so literally within two weeks, um, I was packed up and I went down to Atlanta, you know, gone um, and, and, and ready to do it, you know? Imagine so, your life right now, by the way. Like, yeah. had you not... Just push pins. Man, that's and- <laughs> literally, literally, it, it's it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And like being in the office works for some people, but there's just like, especially wrestlers. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're a wrestler, you're a special breed. You're right. not supposed to be inside. Like not waking up before eleven. Man. Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, and just it, just sitting in the same place. Like I just can't be in the same place for too long. So. Again, just very fortunate. Anybody out there who has a dream, you know, it, it can happen if you choose to pursue it. So. Yeah, and that's why I love your story so yeah. much. Um, I, I think it's great, and I think it really speaks to a lot of people. And, and this is a, a story. So if, if I bring up stuff that might bring stuff down, obviously the end game is look how great you're doing and wonderful you are. Oh, yeah. No, and, it's all good. And, and I remember hearing... Um, I think that you had like a dark match. It didn't go so hot. I think Ace told me this. Yeah. Ace Steel, my trainer. Oh, man. So like maybe like... That experience of, oh my God, is this not, do you have the, 
the thoughts of maybe this is going to work out or I'm screwed? No, or? you know, I take a, I'm a pretty positive guy. Um, yeah, I know that there are going to be like highs and lows or whatever. And obviously, as a performer, you want to be the best at all times. And actually, I had a match with uh, with with Trevor Murdoch. Uh, it was actually in Chicago. Ah. And, um, you know, we had like a dark match, you know, just cutting promos back and forth. The match was going great. And uh, I think I was like in the comeback or something. And uh, I just, I don't know, I guess I forgot what I was supposed to do, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> it's funny because like me and uh, it, like um, Kurt Hawkins will kind of go back and forth about it sometimes. And it's like, I forgot what I was supposed to do. So I did, I gave like uh, Trevor Murdoch like a go behind. I think it was supposed to be like, um, I was supposed to give him like a bulldog, but I had never actually done one. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like a bulldog. And, and, no and, and so like I do like a go behind or whatever, and then he's just like, oh, what are you doing? You know, this southern that. accent. I'm just like, oh. Look, looking back at it now, it probably wasn't as bad as like I thought it was at the at the uh, at the time, but like at the time, you know, it was at the course. time it was just like the my, my career is over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we got like backstage or whatever, and he just like cuts a promo on me, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He's like, you know, I'm making him look stupid out there by going out and, and not being a professional and like, you know, uh, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm glad that that happened, you know what I'm saying? Because I just, uh, like, I take a lot of pride in, uh, in, in my work, you know, and um, if you don't have those low points, you know, you, you, you can't get better, you know what I'm saying? So um i'm just uh, you know i'm just glad that that kind of yeah. that kind of happened plus it makes for a good story now right <laughs> so <laughs> and the company obviously believed in you like at least they're they have the same mentality of like probably like good let's get that out of your system because we're gonna push you and make you a, a big star right so right. hopefully that's okay you get one pass kofi no, yeah no. right yeah but just don't let it happen yeah. again you know and I, I remember just being like uh kind of depressed about it and like steamboat came over and uh you know, it's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, everyone has bad, uh, bad days and whatnot. But it really makes you again just want to be that much better the next time you go out. So, um, again, you got to have those uh, those low points to get mm -hmm. to the higher points. So, yeah, I, I remember that. And it's funny, I, like the next time I went to Allstate Arena, I knew I like I wanted to like blow the lights off. You know what I'm saying? To blow the doors off. Um, but it was uh, blow somebody, so, right? Yeah. <laughs> You wanted to do some blowing, right? I, so, something was going down. <laughs> something was going down, you know, that was going to be better than what happened last right. time. Right, okay, I'll take that so, one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your vin vignettes were awesome. Well, I, I don't know. You, would you say awesome? <laughs> oh, you don't think so? <laughs> you think they were awesome? Oh, yeah, spread the word. Yes, they were awesome. I thought they were terrible. Really? Yeah, be man. Well, first of all, A, it's a throwback to like the 80s when that stuff was awesome. Yeah. And like, I don't remember the acting. I just remember you were oh, on a beach. And I was it, like, sweet. man. No? <laughs> so how about this? Uh, going, talking about about these vignettes right so when you're on like the uh you're you know uh doing dark matches and stuff you can actually listen to the show like in the truck so you hear what's going on you can hear vince like chime in you hear everybody like talking about the matches and you get like a different perspective about things um where was it oh we were just there i think it was baltimore no it wasn't baltimore i don't know somewhere but, but when um, you go into this building you remember this this yes, place is the place that this happened exactly right. and and basically what happened is i was listening to the show in the truck we uh had shot like six vignettes or whatever we were probably on number three and uh i'm on the headset or whatever and the vignette comes out or whatever and, and it's just a lot of them it was just like kind of corny you know what i mean like a, you know and, and i guess that's the way that they kind of are or whatever but like mine i, I just i don't know if i just don't like to watch myself or whatever really? but i'm sitting there watching it or whatever and one of the corny ones comes on i'm just like oh my gosh and then all of a sudden like vince comes on the headset and he's like oh these are just these are barely, barely passable. Jesus. And I'm sitting there just you like, oh, there. my God, I have three more of these left. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm not even going to make it to TV. I'm just like, it, just, it's the, it was the worst thing to hear. You know what I mean? And it's like, you... oh, my God, just let me. And then sure enough, like I come to my debut and have that match that we talked about before. So it was just a, a, a long road. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think like, is, wait. Okay, I got three weeks. Is there something I can do? Were you like, hey, let's go refilm they, these or like anything? Was, we shot them all on the same day. We uh, but did we you shot have them. some kind of mental plan I, to go get them or like they're, they're at that steal point them from the vault. Man, <laughs> you know what? I think I actually ended up. I think I actually ended up debuting before all of them uh, actually came out. So that might have just been. Uh, you know, Vince being uh, okay. Let's let's just get him out let's there. Get him out there. Enough, enough I is enough. Enough is enough. I have to watch any more of these. <laughs> but I I couldn't believe it, and I thought it was like a joke at the time. But like thinking about it now, there's no way that he knows who's listening to the show back there. Like it wouldn't. 
I, I thought it was like, okay, maybe maybe this is a rib. Maybe he no knows. No way. Maybe he, maybe he knows that I'm back there. And there he's like, trying no to, there's no way. way. You know what I mean? No. There's no way that he knew that I was sitting there listening to the show. So That's this is positive like. Kofi, though. My God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, man. It was and, just. And neither uh, would he care if you were. Li- yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Like, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going I'm to get him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that these vignettes are, are barely passable. And that's really going to scare him. No, he really thought that my vignettes were, uh, were, were trash. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. And, and, and whatever. You know, again, uh, here, here I am. It's right. a miracle. It's a miracle that I was able to get past that. Yeah. But again, here, here we are. And traveling uh, with the punker. He, you're, you, yeah. Do you get mad if he calls you his road wife no or is we, he your road wife we're also? both each other's road wives okay. you know what i mean no i i i, I don't mind that at all i don't <laughs> mind that at all it's true do you man. have to do like his laundry we, oh no on occasion no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no 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 again uh, you know being able to travel with cm punk has been awesome I, you know you yeah. came up with punk or whatever and um yeah like uh you know i i actually mentioned this um on his, his dvd that's going to be coming out i don't know if it'll be out by the time this comes out but like i don't um have like a, a CM Punk was a jerk to me the first time I met him story. Which everyone you does. know, which everyone does. Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm kinda I'm kinda sour about that, you know, <laughs> for, for for whatever reason. Uh actually when I first debuted in uh, ECW, I'm sitting there doing push ups or whatever and uh just trying to get the nerves out and I see like a pair of uh, like atomics he, he has like these uh, mm-hmm. these atomic shoes, you know, all beat up and whatnot. So I start to look up and there's CM Punk like looking at me and I'm just like, oh Oh geez, well, what's it? What's he gonna say? And he's like, "Hey, you want a piece of advice?" I'm like, yeah, sure. It's like, oh, remember these people came here to see you. It's like, oh yeah, okay, you know, which kind of like calmed my nerves. And uh, you know, these people are out here to be entertained, so go out there and entertain them. You know, they're not. Uh, it wasn't followed off by fuck it, off for it. No, it, surprisingly. <laughs> right. And now looking back, now again, I'm I'm upset about that yeah. because you know everyone has that story except for me. But um, for for whatever reason, punk is always uh. You know, taking me under his wing, and um, and I'm I'm so grateful for that. You know, uh, I've never had like a uh, like like a big brother. I, I'm the oldest person in my you know sibling in my family and whatnot. Amongst my friends at home, I've always been kind of the mature one, the the big brother type. So I never have really had that uh, that big brother, you know, uh, type of uh, figure. Sure. And, uh, and and punk has really kind of probably been the closest thing That's to nice. that that I've had. So. You know, not to get too sentimental yeah. and, and sappy here, but you know, just very appreciative of the way uh, of the way he's he's treated me in my whole career. Well, he told me some pointers about you. Oh yeah, <laughs> he said he's got. He said he got a little, real little hands. Oh no, see that's a that's a rumor, and I appreciate these small mics. Yeah, you know I mean? that's a, you, you probably you probably <laughs> downgraded the mics to make me feel at home. You know, this but is, I didn't. But my no, my my hands are my hands are uh, just above average size. Okay, you know what I'm saying it's just my biceps are so big. Ah, that's what it's, it is. It's that it makes you know makes my my hands look a lot smaller. Remember DJ Gabriel? That. And that see that's he had okay. Real time, yeah. Like, Did you ever compare with him? Yes, that's the thing. It's like I, everyone would go to shake his hand, you know, and and it'd be like so like small. And now that he's gone, all of a sudden I've become You're a guy. The you know, oh ruler. you got you got the smallest hands on the roster now. You know, so well, he wasn't. There you for know? that long to get compared to, him. yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Which but, we, but love, everyone, DJ. everyone, everyone does remember his hands, yeah. You know? So yeah, we all we always joked around about that stuff. <laughs> Roderick Strong has really small hands, but really, way. yes. And you know ch- who else has strong, uh, small hands too? Is uh, is Hornswoggle? You well, know hey. that that dude has some small ass hands, man. You know, I'm just saying. You know, and people want to give me all this <laughs> flack, yeah. But what about Hornswoggle? You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Hornswoggle has smaller hands than I do, so I don't think so I deserve all the grief that okay, I get okay. about my small hands. What about what about the your eating habits? My eating habits. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always tell people it's a problem. Uh, my metabolism is really really fast. So I basically have to uh, take in as many calories as I can. You're an animal, right? I this is uh, I mean you know it's it's funny because growing up like I never uh, I never liked eating even to the point where like I'd be sitting at the table and my parents you know my dad specifically would be trying to make me finish my food and I'd be wanting to go play outside and I'm sitting there crying and whatnot so he'd break out the camera and try to like take pictures of me crying and I'm sitting there trying to smile and make it look like I'm not crying. You wait, know what, wait I'm what? So yeah, because he it, wants you to see yourself cry. He's just like, Oh, you're crying, you're crying, finish your food, you know what I mean? And just, I, he just would break out the camera 
and then try to like take a picture of me and be like, I guess, oh, look at yourself. You're crying and you have to, because you have to eat your food, you know? Picture the photo like, album and like. And I'm sitting there like <laughs> smiling, trying to make it look like I'm not crying. And I've got like rice in my teeth, you know, just, it's, it's, it's pretty bad, man. And, and I would always like, I was a big Ninja Turtles guy. And, uh, you know, my parents would make a lot of rice with, with stew, you know, African type food or whatever. And I'd, you know, slice the, the, the rice up in a certain way and make it, you know, pretend like it was pizza and, and try to like eat it. You know what I mean? That's so, awesome. But yeah. So yeah, my, my eating habits Wait. now have since changed. If I don't eat a lot, then I'll, I'll, I'll shrivel up and, and be, you know, way too skinny. Do you make so. everything look like a pizza? Not anymore. Not anymore. You know, I, 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 steak, I am. Can you make it look? Like yeah. I, I mean, you, you can, you know, know with that's the, something you do. I, don't know. I haven't done it in a long okay. time. I actually, my wife and I are going to go out to dinner tonight, so maybe, maybe I'll do it tonight just for old times' sake. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. So wait, so but you eat like anything and everything, no? Yeah. Can I out you on this? I don't know. Do yeah, no, no, not at all, not at all. I, I tell people all the time. It's uh, were you it, in the Krispy Kreme challenge? No, what is that? Uh, Punk said he ate 24 Krispy Kremes once or something. He, I did not know that. <laughs> the dog liked it. <laughs> yeah. Penny likes her Krispy Kreme, right? Like, what's, uh, what's just a pig out for you? Uh, or this is, this is it, maintaining your body? It's just, yeah, it's, it's work for me. You it's know, work. like, it's work. And I, I don't, like, necessarily, again, like, still, if it's up to, if I, if I wasn't, like, wrestling and I didn't have to worry about my body, I'd probably have, like, one or two meals a day. You know what I mean? Just because I don't get hungry and um, I can't be bothered to, to sit down and eat a meal. I'd rather be doing other things, you know, just running around and I don't I hate know. You. So, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's uh, a, a funny quote unquote problem You're right. to have, yeah. but it is my problem, yes. And uh, you do have many different, uh, I think when I, half the time when I see you, well, A, we're always, I, we could have done a whole podcast on um, Scramble and Words for Friends. Oh, yes. But, uh, which, uh, did you. I don't know. We're we're pretty good foes, we're, I think. Yeah, yeah. It goes back and forth. You go. Uh, I goes quit words with friends. You quit. Yeah, I'm done with words. Wow, with friends. I like look scramble at you. a lot. Yeah. Wow. I'm a, I'm a, I can't quit words with friends. You can't. I've tried. You I've really tried. have. You? If someone rematches me, like I can't decline the request. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where like I, I won't really like you know hit the rematch button unless I lose. You know, um, but um, if someone again sends me that request, like I can't like not accept it. I can't. You're very, just, you're very competitive. I, yeah. You hate it's, to lose, oh, I've yes. noticed. It's true. It's and, true. And what is, does that come from anything? I don't know. Uh, it's, gosh, I, I, I'm not sure what it is. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like losing. Don't I just like don't. Losing. I mean, I don't, I'm sure no one does. But like, even. We, I'm we had okay a, with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, we actually, we had like a game show one time, uh, Brain, uh, brain Surge. No. Right, I think it was Brain Surge on Nickelodeon. Um, and, and a bunch of us. Who's you, we? It was like me, uh, Gail Kim. Um, oh, you went and did a game show? Yeah, we did oh, a game cool. show out in LA. So it was about like four of us, Morrison and Miz or whatever. And you're like, they paired us up with uh, with kids. And, you know, you go through <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I can only imagine what's coming next. So, <laughs> you know, so we like go through it. I think we were like in the final two or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's supposed to be like all in good fun and whatnot. And, uh, like we ended up losing at the second the second to last round, I think like Gail and her uh, her kid won, and like I was just like so sour, you know what I'm saying? I'm like God, I can't believe we lost. Like I start to look around, there's like all these kids and like the studio audience and whatnot, and they're like trying to interview me, and like I'm just trying no, so no. hard, like not to, you know, no, no. Not, not to put it over. This is just. You know, and I, and I should I should have been happy. You know, like we're getting slimed and going like down these like. Slime. Was it the kid's fault that you lost? Uh. I don't remember. I don't remember. I I don't I don't know. I don't know. But but we did lose as a team. You yeah, know? And it were. was like hey, I don't know. As, as you can see, I'm still kind of sorry right. about yeah, it. It's, it's his face. <laughs> um, well, wait, wait. I guess there's. You've probably done a lot of that random stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What have you? What have you? It, well, TV yeah, shows? you just filmed something, right? Yeah, I just that, filmed right? something on. Uh, on well, it's going to be a show called Kicking It on uh, on Disney, which is going to be really cool because as a kid, like I would have definitely been into this show because it's like a uh, like a martial arts type show, and actually, like the fight scenes and stuff, they they have like fight coordinators and stuff on the set, and uh, for a kid show, like the. It's amazing, like what what they did. We did like a whole bunch of like suspended, uh, like animation type stuff. It's gonna be really cool when it comes out. Um, but you know, I, I I did that, and actually it was kind of like a hard week because like I flew from New York literally all the way to L.A., got right off the plane, did that, 
flew back to the Virgin Islands, you know, had like a signing with the National Guard, which has been really cool uh, to, just to be uh, affiliated with them. And, um, you know, right back on the road weren't to like you, house shows and stuff. Weren't you, on so. a, a, um, a, weren't you on another show I saw for, for, for sci-fi or something or no? Um, what was I on for? Uh... I thought I saw you filming something for sci-fi too. Oh, yeah, you? no, yeah, to, it was actually on last night, a show called Fact or Faked. Yeah. Yeah, which is really cool. We got to, like, explore the possibility of uh, of Stonehenge being, you know, uh, constructed by aliens, or was it, like, man-made? Because, you know, you have, like, these, you know, 20, 10-ton, 10-ton, mm -hmm. 20-ton pillars that and have I, been moved in these prehistoric colonies, you know, didn't really have the technology to do it. So right, and I remember like, thinking that, because we used to do... Um, when I was when I was in um, England for like three months, in the same loop every week we'd do, and we, every time we'd go by Stonehenge, and yeah. I look at it, and you, you kind of wonder. It's kind of deep, I guess. Yeah. Like, how the heck did that get up right, there? Right, right. And I, I guess you know, technically, we'll never know. But we were able Come to kind of uh, tell me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn? It, it was well. We found a guy. There's a guy in uh, Lapeer, uh, Michigan, who was able to like move these pillars like by himself. Uh, Wally Wallingford. Great you know, name. yeah, Great right? <laughs> he was an awesome guy too. Just like you know, so uh, this like dry sense of humor. It was just a really cool experience again to uh, to be a part of. So yeah. Um, okay, and then when I was saying that, um, usually when you're at Punk's house and you're over and, or whatever, you're always on your computer like graphic designing. Is that or oh, making yeah. your own gear? I, th I thought yeah, that was cool. Was like, yeah, man, it, it's it's one of the things again. Like I take a lot of pride in. I'm I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to that. Um, I, I'm i like a, a lot of people know I'm really into comic books. Here's my phone cover here, hey, Venom, Venom, uh, you know, phone cover. But um, you know, like I take a lot of pride in kind of uh just infusing like my logo with like uh, a comic book character. You know what I mean? And and just finding new ways to do that. Like I took a Photoshop class in uh, in school, and I've been able to kind of like get better and better and better with it. So I'm able to kind of just like you know, do a whole bunch of different things. I've done like Ghostbusters and, you know. Uh, I remember when I was in college and they were like, Photoshop class, free, just come at four. And I was like, that would probably, I remember thinking like, this would be great. And I was yeah. just like sitting on my couch. I was like, oh man, sitting on my couch is so awesome <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, I'm glad that you took advantage of uh, yeah. the Photoshop class. It's one of the things that I definitely still use, yeah. you know, for you know, uh, my college degree. Evan Bourne taught me Photoshop. Actually. Oh yeah? I'm very, yeah, I'm very happy that yeah. he did. But had I just gone to the college class. Yeah, you could have yeah. gotten a little, uh, and again, like I probably only use like 15% of the, the program's capabilities mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, it's a really complicated program. So much stuff on there. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Why is stuff so complicated? I don't know. Can you I answer this? I, I, that factor I can't. Factor fishing or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> factor fake. Photoshop is complicated. Yes. Or not. Fact. Yeah. Everything is, not everything is complicated. Well, yeah. Are you, yeah. when I go on these YouTube, like I go on stuff and like look for t tutorials and like halfway through the tutorial on YouTube, I'm just, looking at something else or doing something yeah. else? Like, do you find yourself in this Well, situations? luckily, again, it's, I'm glad that I had that class because it kind of forced me to go and sit there and like, have homework assignments where you're like constantly doing things. I think that the best way is just to kind of uh, just keep working at it because I, I probably do things like the long and hard way and there's probably like a really, you know, uh, a really easy way to do it, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I was just trying to do. It's stuff on computer. I don't know, man. Like, I wish... And, like, because I've done the podcast and I have this YouTube stuff, like, people think, like, oh, Colt, he knows what's, like, I have no, yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I have no clue about anything. Well, oh, I mean, you walk around with this sophisticated recorder and you might. I had to have a, a guy, he, okay, so this podcast, I had a new podcast equipment and, like, I bought it and I was just like, ah, I'll figure it out. And I, like, opened it up. And this is one of the things on the tutorial. I was just like, I have no, and, like, I sat there and I was just like, okay, I just threw down a, a crap load of money on this, and it's just going to sit here. And eventually, I was like, ooh, I was doing a wrestling show. I was like, oh, I'll take it there. Those guys are all smart. And, like, this guy sat down with me, like, thankful oh, enough. yeah. And I still have no clue, but he set it in the right settings, and I know to push that button twice. Yeah. And you talk into that <laughs> microphone, and hopefully this thing has recorded. That's all you need to yeah, know, I'm I guess. I'm hoping. <laughs> but I wish I knew the, the, the ins and outs and, and megahertz and everything, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know man. One day. Uh, do, you, do you and Punk... Swap comic book stories? Is that yeah, no, it's funny. Uh, well, Punk actually got me, um, like, like uh, actually, the game, uh, what was it, like Marvel Alliance or whatever? The game was, was about picking up chicks, actually. The Marvel Alliance game was about picking oh, up chicks? Oh, I don't know, just the game. Oh, the see, well, okay, because I, again, going back to game, like, I don't, I don't have any game, Nothing. you know what I'm saying? I sit, my I sit in my hotel room and play video games right. and read comic books, so. You're one, you're one of you those know? guys that the yeah, old people man. hate. Yeah. Oh, no. You're, ex right? I, All the, these new kids are sitting in their hotel room. 
<laughs> on the internet right. and surfing the web and yeah. That's me, man. Yeah, that's, it's so much fun, sir. You should yeah, try it. Yeah, but oh, they did. They came on the net and they yeah, played video games man. with you all day. It's like fun. Dick Murdoch's it, just sitting with you. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, this how, is you, how you make your own gear, man. Yeah. You can design. Yeah, man. Yeah, even like overseas, a lot of times people will go out and just enjoy like the nightlife. And I just go back up to my room and uh, Skype with my wife for three hours at a time and, and, and go to sleep and wake up and do what it again the next morning. What are you talking about for three you know? hours? Just life, man. Wow. You know? Just life. And, and, Wives, man. You know, how was your day? Yeah. You know, oh, it was good. What'd you do? You know what I'm saying? We, we're connected, Colt. Yeah, you no, know? I, I know you are. <laughs> I, don't, this is, I don't know this world, man. It's my life, man. That's, yeah. that's it. That's, that's what I got. That's, you like it? I like it. Yeah. I like it. I can't complain. I can't complain. Okay. Um, obviously, you probably want to be WWE champion and stuff. And, yeah. Um, how, do, you, do you just see, like, keep on going at the bit and eventually it'll just happen? Or, yeah, or, uh... well, the thing about, yeah, I get asked that all the time, you know what I mean? Um, I, I think the main thing, like, I, I, oh, I've learned... Oh, I don't want to ask that then. Yeah. What do you think about <laughs> Jolly Ranchers? <Yeah. laughs> oh, Jolly Ranchers, Sour Apple, and, uh, and, and Fruit Punch are the best flavors. Uh, everyone, I'll agree with the Fruit Everyone punch. knows that, you know? I'll take you, Fruit Punch. No jo- Sour Apple, I'm not no? a sour guy at any means. Whoa. And I know Bunk's always got sour... Patch kids and like it's yeah. gross to me. That's just kind of weird, man. Sorry, that's just, sour apple. Hey, no, take me for who I am. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to be anybody. I'm yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> I would never let you into my house yeah, that I know that you didn't like sour things. But yeah, you I like know, you when you lose uh, games to two year old to oh, twelve year olds on Nickelodeon. Man. That's oh, it's the worst. That's oh what, that's man, what I like even sour. like gosh, <laughs> I lost. Uh, you know, punk on his bus. He has a uh, like Street Fighter. And you know, oh, he, he said that to me. Did, did he talk about like As, Zangief? Yeah. God, oh, I'm still so mad about that. He beat me with Zangief, and like for probably like a couple weeks before, we're talking, you know, just all this trash about, you know, I was like, look, man, there's no way you'll ever, ever beat me with Zangief, and I'm murdering him, you know, I'm killing him or whatever. And at the time comes, he's like doing some filming for his uh, DVD. And he beats me. On the DVD? On the DVD. Ooh, it's like, documented now. Oh, my God. Because I remember still, you took a picture of when you beat uh, me once with a friend. Uh, You're like, it's documented. Yeah, you know, you got to say, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm still embarrassed about it, man. It's, it's pretty embarrassing. It's, well, it's, uh, it's pretty embarrassing. I'm sorry. But so you'll ne- so now, now you'll I've, have to be I've the world champion. I've lost to Zangief. I've I've not. Uh, it's, prove him wrong. It hasn't have been to be the same. The world yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. You right. beat me with Zangief. I'll beat you for the title. <laughs> nah, but, but yeah. like, do you want to be one of these dudes that's like, uh, I mean, like a, like a lifer? Is that what they would call it with WWE? Like, I mean, I could see yeah. you being like, well, Coco yeah. Beware, like taking his yeah. acceptance <laughs> speech or whatever, you know, or. Yeah, well, I, I have Nikolai, no idea. Nikolai Volkov, or I mean, yeah. you're in. You're you're your character. I feel. Well, I you, you, you never know. You never know what uh what what the future holds or whatever. I, I always uh, tell people like I don't really worry about the things I can't control. You know what I mean? Like. Um, Obviously, I think with anything, if you're not trying to be the best, like, why are you even doing it? You know what I mean? And um, my goal is obviously to, to to be in that top tier. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I can't control it, you know, as far as like the booking and all that. But what I can control is going out and, and having the best match possible with anybody I'm in there with. You know what I'm saying? Going out literally trying to steal the show every time, you know, um, and, and doing things that no one's seen and uh, just continuing to be innovative and uh you know making people uh putting smiles on people's faces and making people say wow and making people remember me when i'm out there you know that's what i that's what i do have control over so um that's really all i can really worry about you know what i'm saying and kind of take it one day at a, at a time and um and, and just kind of take it from there you know um yeah obviously i it, it is in my goal you know set to be to, to to be that world champion to be wwe champion just to be on that top tier um but again, like I can't control everything, so um, I just work on controlling what I can control. All right. So do you, do you we'll see we'll your, see, man. Do you we'll see yourself see. like as like 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 these guys that are agents, or do you want to be like? Do you want to be like? Okay, my wrestling career is done. I'm gonna go to. Uh to, to Thailand and yeah. uh, <laughs> right? like, I, I, I have no idea man I, I haven't planned that far in the future I haven't cool. planned that far in the future again I'm just trying to focus on the uh, the here and now sure. you know as, as Harry Smith would say in the now you know what I mean and he would put out his hand but, like yeah. this <laughs> and wear a, yeah. wear a hat yeah man but uh, yeah who, who knows who knows right. uh, I guess we'll cross the bridge when it comes okay um, <laughs> do we wanna, what do we want to end this you tell me you tell me I don't know. How hard is it to do that hair? <laughs> oh, the hair. Yeah. Well, I actually get is it retwisted. Something? I get it retwisted every week. You know, my, my wife actually does it. I, I, tw- I twist a new growth. 
Um, I don't you know, know what that means. so basically, like, the, the, <laughs> my hair is locked. My hair is locked. You know, it's a, it's dreadlocks. A lot of people have no idea what the difference is between dreadlocks, twists, braids. Mm. You know, are I have dreadlocks. Our truth has uh, twists. JTG has braids, specifically cornrow braids. You know what I'm saying? There's a big difference. There's a whole mm. there's a whole culture here. Wow. You know. But um, I have yes. Ju- I have Jufro. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. You. you know. But uh, yes, the, the the new growth uh, needs to be twisted, as you can see up here. It's getting a little uh, out of control. Oh, those would be like your roots. This almost. the roots. The, right. the the hair still grows. You know. So if you're it a four year old out. woman. Those would be your roots. Those right? would, these would yeah. be the roots. Right. Yeah, you'd okay. have to get your roots uh, re dyed. Right? Is that what? I would. Yeah. Is that what they do? I think so. Uh, okay. They. What do you think about that? They. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, that's 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 it. That's, All right, I love that's it. That's the deal, man. All right, I love it. Uh, at True Kofi on at Twitter. At True Kofi on Twitter, yes. And yes. do you go? Do you, you were one of the first adopters, I think, right? For Twitter, yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I mean, I, I think it was like Miz was like on it really early, you know. Obviously, Ryder. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been on for for quite a bit now. You know, I've uh, been almost what like three years now, or, or something like that. So, and do you have any other? Do you do Facebook or YouTube or any of that? No, stuff? I mean, there you know, there's a WWE Facebook page, right? Um, and, and I do not have a YouTube channel, okay. but um, who knows? Oh, what's the funniest? Oh, here's something else. Uh, we'll. Is that all your plugs? WWE.com. That's it, man. Uh, yeah. Watch every Monday night on USA. That's right. <laughs> I'll just say this, Kofi. In 2007, I got signed to the WWE, and I changed my name to Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Oh, snap. In 2007. Yeah. 2008, you debuted. Hey. So I'm just... You know what's funny? I like how you say you've taken from different people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had another boom, you know, so oh, technically okay. it's not... It, it's funny you because me. You it, really it, did. It, never, it never was boom at first. You know, I used to just come out and just... You say like, buck, buck, right? Buck, 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 you know? Yeah. And then uh, Taz, I think, uh, said boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden you started seeing signs everywhere that was like boom, boom, boom. I'm like, okay, well, this is obviously what's marketable. So right. I guess I guess it'll be boom now. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So Yeah, you were saying I, like book book or yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there was no it was not like a, a real word, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then all of a sudden it just like became like something and that, you know, uh if if I stole it from you, it was not by no, it was I, not by <laughs> design or intention. But I it think was, <laughs> I assume everyone who's listening right now was like, How could that not come up? Yeah. So, all right, all right, I'll bring it up. Sure, man. But I'm not salty about it. No, it's all good. I'm not sour about it. It's all good. How about this? The the first two booms of my three boom, boom, booms will always be dedicated to you. Oh. Yes. It's it's documented. That's right. Thank you, Kofi. That's a dedication, if you will. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, bud. Cool. Thank you, man. All right, Kofi Kingston, buddy. Thanks for joining me on the podcast this week on the podcast. Good to have you. Fun time sitting down, conversing. One thing we did not get into, I guess we couldn't because the podcast ended, but after we ended the podcast, me and my buddy, we roamed around his house. We were checking things out. We saw some of the merchandise that he had. He had all the figures of his friends hung up in his walls, and then we got into a different room, and this was, oh, I don't know, the the music room? Kofi, I didn't know you were a musician. He had some of these instruments laying around, and I said, Kofi, we would have talked about this. This is a great thing to talk about on the podcast. And he said, uh, well, here's the thing. I was so good at Guitar Hero that I assumed I could just buy a guitar and become a legend at that instrument. Correct. That's right. Did you hear that? That sums up our slash my generation. This guy is such a video game expert. He's a master at it. He's doing five buttons, five different colors of Guitar Hero. He just assumes he can go buy a guitar and serenade his woman with a little Eric Clapton. That's how he thought this life works, but it doesn't, Kofi. You can't be good at the WWE video game and just become a WWE professional wrestler. You know that. Shame on you. But hey, Kofi Kingston out of the office, out of the Staples Corporation, and into the WWE Corporation. Great success story. And it's just starting, man. He's just on his way. He's a young buck in the world of the WWE and professional wrestling. So many years ahead of him. But uh, we appreciate him sitting down and talking a little bit about these years here on the podcast. But that's it for this week, guys. We're going to get out of here. But before we do, let's get into some plugs and upcoming events. All right, guys, you know the best way you could support this very podcast, coldmerch.com, T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, and so much more. Of course, the headbands are now there, and Rob Schamberger's great art 
on a poster. Check that out at coltmerch.com. I have a Twitter. See who the next guest on the Art of Wrestling is going to be. See what I have to say about the world of wrestling or just in general at Colt Cabana. I don't have a tout. I got an email. If you have something important to say to me, you can say it to me there. Or if you're a booker and you want to promote me on your upcoming show or convention, coltwrestling at gmail.com. I do have snail mail, a P.O. box. I love getting stuff in my mailbox. The address is on welovecolt.com. Of course, I have a Facebook slash AOW podcast. You should like it. We'll talk about the episodes each week. Upcoming Friday, July 27th, this Friday on iPay-Per-View anywhere in the world. If you're in Charleston, Indiana, come check it out. If not, go to WWNLive.com. It's brought to you by High Spots, and it's the $5 Wrestling iPay-Per-View. Saturday, July 28th, Long Island, New York, FWEWrestling.com. And then Sunday, July 29th, I have a free Art of Wrestling podcast taping starts at 3 p.m. in Chicago, Illinois at ChallengerComics.com. It's right before the DG USA show. It's three blocks from the DG USA show at the Congress Theater. First 100 people get a free button, a free DG USA button, courtesy of Mutant Cactus. Saturday, August 4th, LaSalle, Illinois, DreamWaveWrestling.com. August 8th through the 12th, I will be at the Gathering of the Juggalos at Cave and Rock, Illinois, JuggaloWrestling.com. Friday, August 17th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, ChikaraPro.com. Saturday, August 18th, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, NECW.TV. Friday, August 24th, Berwyn, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Saturday, August 25th, Norfolk, Virginia, VCW-Wrestling.com. Then Friday, August 30th, and Saturday, September 1st, Perth, Australia, NHPW.com.au. That's it, guys. This has been the episode for this week. This has been the Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. But you pretty much. Oh. He doesn't agree. He doesn't believe that. <laughs> Penny, Penny is. Uh, she's. You know, it's a, it's a real funny story about these dogs here. We've. Uh, hey. Uh, shh, shh. So there's a bunch of dogs outside. Oh, there she is, closing the blinds. <laughs> we can edit this right now. But yeah. So any. Uh, yeah. Hey, dogs. Shut the fuck up. See some dogs out there. They're trying to trying to protect the roost. You know. Protect um, the house.